In this video, I, I want to discuss prophets who are preaching for profit. Christian ministers, preachers who copyright their sermons. Take your mind back for a bit. Can you imagine if Paul, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Can you imagine if they said to you that we have been given this inspiration? I think um, Paul wrote to Timothy when he says all inspiration is inspired by God for reproof, correction unto righteousness. The scriptures which are inspired, if Paul says, well, they're inspired by God. Even though I'm preaching, I'm writing it down, I'm living that experience. But I'm going to charge you. You know, or if I don't charge you, you mustn't repeat anything I say. Or do not even mimic my good, righteous behavior because it's intellectually copyrighted. You'd, you'd begin to question, something is odd here. Is this a business? You know, you're supposed to be, the Bible says freely give, freely give, freely receive. But yet, these people are copywriting their sermons. Music is totally different, I can, I can understand that. If you wrote that music. I can understand that. But these people are preaching from the Bible. They claim that they are inspired. While they talk, you see some of them when they're preaching, they say, right now, God is talking to me, right now. And they say they're inspired. They're inspired right now. God is talking to me. I have a revelation. Yet, that revelation, that inspiration is copyrighted. You can't share it. You begin to realize something is wrong. Has Christianity now become big business? Mega churches, preachers, or vine for number one, um, Creflo Dollar was saying that he's going to trust God for 60 million, or was it more than 60 million? But really what he meant, he wasn't trusting God, he was using reverse psychology. What he was saying, the church will pay for his um, aeroplanes, but the aeroplanes don't, or the private jets don't belong to him, it belongs to the church. That's the mind games that they play with you. The, the, the private jets, which I know not one of his members you know, are going to fly into or use. Not one of his members will have access to that private jet. Not one. Yet, it belongs to the church. You try and get that around your head. You own it, but you don't have access to it. You have no say in it. You don't even get to feel the leather seat. Oh, this is beautiful. Live the lavish life, yet you own it. It's like voting for the government. Yeah, the government, you know, they represent the interest of corporation. You vote in the government, yet the government don't work for your interest. They work for corporations. And you wonder why the country is suffering. Same thing with the church. You, you are supporting these fake prophets, these liars, these cheats. Yet they claim that they're doing it for you and for God while they're in these mansions living lavish, opulence, lifestyle. Yet it's not God, it's not them living in that mansion, it's God living there. In other words, using reverse psychology, 
they become God. They are God. They're just not going to use it in that term because they know that you'll wake up. So they're very clever how they do things. But copywriting their sermons, all my videos you can share. I don't copyright any of my videos because if I believe they are inspired, how then can I say, well, you know something, I'm going to make money from it. And you know, you, know, you can't share it. You can't, you can't even share a portion of it. That does not make sense. But this is what's happening. They are, they are copywriting their sermons. Intellectual copyright, using, using the um, international copyright law, intellectual copyright, meaning if it comes from your mind, if you think about it, it's copyrighted. That's what intellectual copyright means. So you don't have to be written, it doesn't have to be spoken. Just think about it, intellectual copyright. Just, it's like that's how design work and patents. Now, Christ, Christian preachers, if you can call them Christian preachers or, or, or prophets, I don't know how prophets are going to copyright their prophecies, but this is how what's happening to the church now. This is happening. You know, they're copywriting their sermons. How did it come to this? For the simple reason. A lot of fake Christians do not want to acknowledge that Christianity today is big business. It's all about money. Why? Right? They're being pimped, they're being lied to, they're being deceived. You know, for the time you have all these evangelists praying over Donald Trump, who they know has got a checkered past, said he, he would have sex with his own daughter if it wasn't his daughter. He's got an illicit background, molesting women, yet he, he, he's a man of God. And these, these evangelists know about his background. They know what, he's, what he was like, yet they called him anointed. They were playing games with you. They wanted you to vote Donald Trump because he gave them millions. While you were starving, they gave you millions to, um, during COVID lockdown. He supported the churches in favor for votes. That's the reason why, I must make a separate, separate video on this. That's the reason why they called him anointed. It was because he paid them. They lied to you and they lied to the Holy Spirit. That's even worse. They lied to the Holy Spirit by calling him anointed. Anointed being not from the Holy Spirit. They called him that. A man who was an adulterer, a fornicator, incestuous. And the only reason why half America supported the Republicans, they don't care about Christianity. It's, it's all about money. All about money. And people, they don't want the truth. Which is why they don't want Jesus. Because they don't want the truth. They want to copyright and make money, serious money, by protecting their works. Not God's work, their works, which means you can't distribute it. You have to ask for permission. You don't need to ask permission to share my videos. Anything and everything I've said, I stand by it and I can back it up in any court of law. There's nothing I've said that I'm ashamed of and I can't defend. Maybe that's the reason why these preachers are scared that what they've said in the past will come back to haunt them. You know, like celebrities, you know, they come up with all these, you know, things that they called homophobia, etc., and they come back, oh, I was young then, I was naive. And that's why people are scared to, to have their material shared because it's, it's going to affect their career. Everything and anything I've said, I can back up in any court of law. There's not one lawyer that can challenge me. Everything I've said, I can back it up. Maybe these preachers know they can back up what they preach. Hence why they're going to copyright it. Or there's money 
to be made. I leave that to you, the viewer, to make up your minds. Why do you think they copyright their sermons? Why do you think that something that was supposed to be freely given is now big business? I leave that to you to decide.